Hello, welcome to my channel and specifically to the series Deep Learning with Keras and TensorFlow 2.0. So far in this series, we have learned how to create deep learning models from scratch using both sequential and functional API of Keras. We also learned how to create the input for these models. In this video, we are going to discuss an important aspect of machine learning, which is data pre-processing. Specifically, we're going to learn how we can do pre-processing as part of the models in Keras. So let's get started. Before we dive deeper into understanding how to add a pre-processing layer to our existing Keras model, let's understand what is pre-processing. Let's say you have an audio file. In that audio file, let's say we have at occasion some sounds that are really high and at some times we have sounds that are really low. So we're going to see, when we read that data, we're going to see amplitudes that are really high and amplitudes that are really low. So we're going to see numbers that are really high and really low. So essentially, we're going to have a lot of variation in our data. So that's one example where we might have to do some sort of pre-processing. A second example, let's say we have a text data. We all know that our machine learning models, they don't understand text. So we have to represent that text as numbers for our machine learning models to understand. So that's second example where you might have to do some sort of pre-processing. And these two examples that I've just discussed, the type of pre-processing processing that we, we would be doing is normalization and tokenization. And there are several other types of pre-processing that we can do depending on the data type. So for example, for the images, you can resize, um, crop, and whatnot. And I suggest you to check Keras documentation because besides these two type of pre-processing, there are several types of pre-processing layers that Keras already has, and we just have to understand them and plug them into our models. Now, in order to actually do the pre-processing, there are two options. The option one is to do the pre-processing out of, out of Keras. So let's say we have our data and we understand our data completely and we know how to pre-process it. So we manually pre-process it. And once we have pre-processed it and we take that pre-processed data and then we pass that data to our machine learning models and train those models with the data. So that's one option. The second option, which is the most effective option, and which is what we will be discussing in this video, is to make pre-processing as part of our models. So let's understand in the next few slides how we can make pre-processing as part of our Keras models. Okay, as I mentioned before, there are several pre-processing layers in Keras. In this video, I'm going to just take normalization as an example, but the process that we will be learning of how to plug this pre-processing layer in Keras is the same for, for pretty much all of them. So let's understand how we can do pre-processing, normalization as pre-processing in Keras. Just as a refresher, normalization basically means we want to bring our data to a certain range. So let's say your data might have some really big numbers and some really, really small numbers. And we want to normalize it. What, what I mean by that is we want to bring it, bring all of that data into some range. So let's say we want all of that data to be between negative one and one. So that's an example of normalizing our data. So in order to normalize our data, what we need to know is the mean and the variance of, of our data, right? So Let's go to the code and see how we can do pre-processing in Keras. Okay, here I have two snippets. The reason why I have two snippets is because I wanted to show side by side how we can do pre-processing using both functional API and sequential API. And just as a refresher, as we learned in the first video in this series, there are two ways we can create deep learning models in Keras. One is using their functional API and their sequential API. So that's why I wanted to show both examples here. Okay, so specifically, I want you to pay attention to the text in the boxes. 
let's focus on the functional API first. Here the code shows all of the uh, model, but really the important part to understand pre-processing is the box that I have in red. So what we do as a first step is add a normalization layer. Just like we have added previously the dense layers or LSTM layers, we, we simply add a normalization layer by saying layers.normalization. Now, we have added the layer, but for normalization, we need to know mean and the variance of our data. As you can see, we are not feeding at that information. So our normalization layer has to somehow learn that information. In order to do that, what we do is we use this function called adapt. So we, we take this normalization layer and we adapt it to our training data. So that's where it will learn the mean and standard deviation of our data set. So once we have done that, then we basically take this normalization layer, this normalizer, and give it our input and then from here on, these steps are the same. So we take this normalized data, x equals normalizer inputs, and then we take this as the, we take this input and feed it into our first layer. And then from there on, the process is the same that we've discussed in the previous slides. So that's how we create, a, how, how we add a pre-processing layer to our Keras model. Now let's take an example of a sequential API. Here, the process is exactly the same, except that uh, for the sequential API, the way we add, we, we create a model is by using this model.add. So we still have to create the normalization layer by saying layers.normalization, and that we do need to adapt our training data because that's how it's going to learn the mean and the variance of our data. From there on, the process is the same. So all we have to do is in our sequential model, the first layer that we're going to add is the normalization layer. So that's all. That's all we need to do. Now, after we have um, trained our model and we print out the model summary, and this might look familiar to you if you have watched my previous video. So this is just a model summary of the model that was trained. So the difference here compared to the previous videos is this layer. As you can see, the first layer is just the input layer and then we have our other layers of the model. And because we added the normalization layer, it's also telling us that, hey, you have a normalization layer after the input layer. The second thing I want you to pay attention to is these parameters. Here we have total parameters, uh, real, uh, like. 200 2 million and then some of them are trainable parameters which belong to our uh, neural network layers such as lstm and dense layers but then for the normalization we have non-trainable parameters because we don't need to train these are not trainable parameters so it's showing you there's a 1001 if you want to understand how what these numbers are i'm going to create another video that's going to explain how we get these numbers. But in this slide, just wanted to show you that in our, in our, when we print the model summary, it's going to show us the normalization layer in addition to other layers that we have in the, in the model. So in summary, what we've learned in this slide, in this video is how we can do pre-processing as part of our Keras model. There are two options as we studied. We can do pre-processing outside of the model, which will be uh, what you will be doing manually, or you can do pre-processing as part of the model by adding a pre-processing layer, an existing pre-processing layer in Keras. And pre-processing as part of the model is the preferred way because let's say, let's say you want to just train the model and evaluate the model, and you want to save that model, and use it on some data that is the, that model has never seen before. So in that case, when you have, when you saved your model, which contained the pre-processing layer, it's already going to know how to pre-process any random, uh, not random, but any uh, data that you're going to feed into that model for at the inference. So that's 
that's all for this video and i will see you in the next one and if you like the content that we have here please subscribe and i would be happy to have you as part of my channel thank you